uh, I first learned about biodynamics from uh, a student of mine. I started my career in higher education and um, had a student uh, who uh, was uh, a strong proponent of organic agriculture uh, and also very intrigued by Rudolf Steiner's work. And so he had read Rudolf Steiner's agriculture lectures and one day he brought me a copy of Rudolf Steiner's agriculture lecture and handed it to me and said, I think you'd like to read this. So I said, okay, so I took it home with me that weekend and I read it. And at that point, you know, some of the things that Rudolf Steiner was saying was kind of a little weird to me. I wasn't quite sure about it, but I also sensed that there were some really important things there. And so when my student came back the next Monday to get his copy, he asked me what I thought. And I said, well, I'm not sure I understand everything, but I think there's some important things here and I want to go back and reread it some more, which of course I never did. And then uh, when I went back to the farm in 1976 to turn the farm into an organic farm, um, I didn't even know there was such a thing as an organic market. I did that totally because I had learned about the impact that organic management could have on the biological health of soil. And so that's what I was interested in. And then um, in 1980, I get a call from a guy named Michael Marcola out here in Connecticut. And um, he wanted to know if I had, some, he said, I understand, from, and he, he had talked to this student, this former student of mine. And uh, so he said, uh, I understand that you're an organic farmer. Do you have any uh, high protein uh, organic wheat? And I said, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, we have some 16 percent protein wheat in the bin and uh, but I didn't know anything about an organic market and so uh, he said so you're not certified and I said no I don't even know what that is so he actually got on a plane and flew out to North Dakota to check out the farm etc to make sure that it met the specifications and then he bought two loads of my wheat and I got a 50 cent a bushel premium so I thought well that's kind of a good deal <laughs> So the next winter, uh, my wife's family lived in Connecticut, and we came out usually between Christmas and Easter to spend some, maybe Christmas and New Year to spend some time with them. And then when I came out here, I realized that Michael's business, the Merkin Food Company, was actually only about 60 miles from where my wife's family lived. So I called him up and asked if we could get together and I could learn some more about the organic market. He said, yeah. So uh, I drove down and we went out and had lunch and, and he was the one who first told me about you know, the market demands for buckwheat and all those kinds of things that helped me kind of rethink my, my uh, crop rotation system. And then as we were walking back to his office after lunch, he turned to me and he said, now if you really want to be attractive in the European market, and most of the market he was talking about at that time, uh, this was in the early 1980s, was in Europe. And uh, he said, if you really want to be attractive in the European market, you should go biodynamic. And I said, what's that? So now we're at his office, and now he pulls his copy of Rudolf Steiner's Act on across the shelf and said, here's where you start. And I said, oh my God. So I actually took his copy with me, and uh, got, when I got back uh, to North Dakota, I read it. And now, after four years of managing a farm organically, I began to really understand the issues that Steiner talked about and uh, was really intrigued, especially by, you know, Steiner's insistence that you had to treat the farm as an organism, that any time you bring something in from outside the farm, it's, it's an indication of, of an ill farm, and that uh, you always had to pay attention to the inner workings of nature, and I understood that as being important as an organic farmer.